Right, I've been asked a few times to uh, put a strip down guide for the Webley FX. Um, everyone seems to be having trouble locating the strip down guide for this. Uh, basically, all I've done at the moment is move the stock, um, obviously, there. Uh, it's hard, it's a Varak. Actually, a treat on these. Stick it aside. Um, right, first thing you do, make sure it's empty of air. Um, as, as you probably already know, if you undo these nuts and there's pressure in there, uh, you're going to know about it and you won't be worrying about any leaks of any sort because you'll be in no condition to use a gun after. Uh, so yes, make sure the gun is empty of air. Uh, two ways of doing it, you can dry firing or very slowly release the valve till you can hear in this but you don't want it coming out too fast because the o-ring will get hot um hot o-ring and it will split on you at a later date so just undo the air valve um sorry the um air gauge real slowly and uh, you'll get a hiss of air i mean i'm on about i believe 150 there um what i'm doing on this one is uh new hammer spring now uh, the hammer spring on this one is naked um but when I'm doing it, I'm gonna open up, put some new seals in, uh, just so people can see how it's done. Um, right, here we go. Right, as I say, first off, get the air out. The air gauge, as I say, you can draw for it, or you can just, I mean, this has to come out to get at the gubbins inside, so just a slight turn. You should only done it hand tight. And that's a, just let her decant. Okay, yeah, there we go. Uh, pressure gauge is out. That's this one. This is a little O-ring. I'm gonna drop a, a drawing pin next to that so you can just see how small that little bugger is. Uh, you really don't wanna lose him. Um, unless you're replacing new, it doesn't matter, uh, which I will be doing. Uh, but what we'll do is we'll stick them all in the top. Right, next up, we need to remove the barrel. Uh, it's held in place by three bolts, or three elements. One in the end, in there. Now there's one down here. The gun needs to be cocked, and the mag holder, and you can just see that little one in there. Uh, the last one is down this end. Take your filler probe out, look down the bottom in there. Uh, I probably can't get the light into that, but down in there is another one, a uh, little nut or Allen key, which holds the front of the barrel in. Uh, once those three are undone, this will all lift off. When lifting this off, your transfer port is in here with two small O rings, which I'll show you as I take it off. But you have to bear with me as I do this. I'm trying to hold the camera and do the job at the same time. Right, I've released the three grubs. Uh, you can't really put these back in wrong because they're, they, they, they're made, well, just so it happens. Uh, the longest one at the back, middle one, middle, smallest one to the front. Uh, as I said, I've taken these out because I can't do it and hold the camera. But now, this whole mechanism will lift off being aware that your transfer port is under here with small o-rings which normally come out stuck to it okay you can just see your little o-ring in there here transfer port and there's another o-ring in there where i've just taken it out of right Next up, we take the trigger off, uh, which is a simple case on these. Little pin in there, just push that pin out, trigger will drop straight off. So it'll all come out as one kit, go straight back in the same. Once that's out and that's out, this end plug will come straight out. Move your cocking arm, hammer and the hammer housing will slide straight out. We'll get to that bit next. Right, there we go, barrel is off. Um, as I said earlier, transfer port. Now, when taking this off, 
I can see that well, this is one of the O-rings to the transfer port that you can see is actually split. So when you put these in, be very careful. Uh, best way to do it, put the O-ring on the transfer port, put it in with the O-ring on. When you do it, put the top end, the barrel ring, assembly back on, put your O-ring on this first while it's sat in there and lower it down gently, you should be fine. Right, next up is to remove the um, trigger. As I said, it's a simple job. Allen key in the hole. Push the pin out. Like so. As I said, just want to do the mechanistic see, just pull that pin through, push them out with the hand key, that whole trigger assembly will just come straight off in one. You can't really do that wrong. Uh, again, it is a little bit tricky because you have to wiggle this little bugger around uh, to, get, to get the oars lined back up. But that's a trigger assembly. Uh, we now need to strip that. Cocky bolt comes off. Uh, I've already loosened this. Uh, because it's a bit of a bugger to do with one end and so well I'm recording it but that will come off put him to one side all right well the send cap will just push out in plug so be careful you've got a little spring in here which is your trigger tensioner In here, get me out. And there it is. You hammer house in, and the hammer. Uh, a power adjustment to tweak it to to your uh, 12 foot pounds, uh, which is UK legal limit. Uh, down on this end, if you can see, you've got a hole in the end of the actual hammer. Down there, which you can line up with this hole. You then pop an Allen key in to lock it in position. Screwdriver in there, and that can adjust your tension. Turn it in, more power, turn it out for less power. This won't adjust the power much, but it will tweak it to a legal limit. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so you're within the laws. Okay, next up. This is your filler valve assembly in here. Three nuts. I've released these already. As I say, it's hard to do with one in. So I've already released these. Get them off. Now this little baby will come straight out. Further down here, you've got another three. Release these. All the same size, so you only got to be keeping three from three to keep them separate. All the same size. Okay. There's not a lot to these guns, they're just so simple to work on. And yes, yeah, that's a tree. Okay, next up we need to move the valve inside. The uh, everything, the hammer valve, and the implant. Simple way to do that, I use a rod. Got a plastic tip so it doesn't damage the hammer, which is down in there. Uh, we do slide them in the end, make sure it's loose. If you have a, a wooden broom handle, it's ideal. Slide them along, pushing it all through, and then just give them a push. And it will. Oh, there you go. <coughs>
That's your filler valve in there. Keep pushing. And there we go. <sighs> Pretty straightforward. In fact, they're very straightforward. It's, it's, it's unreal how easy these are. Right, take your tube out. And that's it. She's completely empty. Put them to one side. Right, O rings to change when doing the wibbly effects. On these, this one here. Very simple. Just two O rings. One, two, which I'm going to be changing. This one here is your firing valve pin. Simple way to undo these. I'll try and do this so that you can see. Um, all I do, two small Allen keys. I'll lift it up so it's above the firing valve. So you don't want to bend in that. Just give it a twist, like so. Releases it. The little baby unscrews. And what you've got in here, it's not a lot. As I say, it's dead simple. Spring. pin. Now in there there's another little o-ring I believe which we will get out. Uh, obviously this o-ring here will be changed. But yeah dead simple. So we're going to get on with that now but let me show you what we've got here. And that's how she fits back together. You can't really go wrong. Very tiny o ring down here. That'll be changed. Uh, you need to be real careful when taking these off. If you're married or you've got a girlfriend, nick her fine tweezers. Makes life a hell of a lot easier. All right, new o rings are on. Um, I use a very small bit of grease. Rubbing your finger, you don't want too much on this, and it's just solely to lubricate the rubber so it doesn't burn while sliding it down because they are quite tight fit. But don't overdo it with this grease because uh, there really is no need. As I say, just a bit. Solely to lube. It's, it's only, as I say, push them down the barrel they're such a tight fit they do get warm um, gets a bit supple then when you go past the screw holes or the nut holes in the cylinder the holes all this in place you've got a good chance that it will snag on it and tear which will give you a very slow air leak and you'll be doing it all again but anyway that's her that's her and it's away we go only going one way if you study the barrel or the cylinder I should say they will only go in one way uh, obviously the little one with the little white plastic cap in there is for your uh, pressure gauge that will sit on these first two with the pressure gauge at this end and you just come along there we are that's the rest uh, You've got one hole in here which isn't going right down, uh, it's offset from the others, it's the smaller one. Uh, if you just remember that your stock actually screws into that, so you know those two there have to line up with these two here. You need to put these in real slowly because you've got to get that all lined up when you push them back in. But it's easy if you do it wrong, just push them out, put them all back in again. Right, next up, we'll have a quick look at this. So, um, this is your filler valve. Goes in the end. The probe goes in. Uh, there's not a lot in these, but I'm going to open it and show it so that you've got it. Unscrew on the end. Oh, 
put my mouth. Then you'll have a little spray. That little baby there. I don't know if you can see it. That's not the clearest in the world, but there is an O-ring on there. Or if you're getting a leak through your air valve, uh, your filler valve, nine times out of ten, that'll be a little culprit there. So make sure you change it. It all just sits in there, you can't really see in there. There's nothing really to look at. Uh, but yeah, the air pressure keeps this closed. The air pressure in the cylinder is forcing it closed, uh, which is why sometimes they say, if you like, put a bit more air in it and it forces it closed harder. It's not the way to repair it, it won't repair it. But sometimes a bit more air pressure will solve a leak if it's stuck for the leak going out. 